Hi, this is Chris Young, and I wanted to walk you through some of the various ways that I've accessed my personal computer over the years. First, a bit of introduction about me. I'm 67 years old, and I have a genetic neuromuscular disease called spinal muscular atrophy type 2. It's kind of like muscular dystrophy, a little bit like ALS. When I was young, I never walked. I used a wheelchair my whole life. I did have some use of my hands and my arms all the way through uh, school up through college where I went to uh, IUPUI and earned a bachelor's degree in computer science. But in my early 20s, uh, my disability worsened and I gradually started to lose use of my arms. And so that provided a, quite a challenge for accessing a personal computer. Here's a photo of me from many years ago when I would type on the computer by poking at the keys with a stick. You'll notice just above the keyboard there's a small trackball and I could push the trackball around with the stick. One of the buttons on the trackball was a toggle button for the left mouse click. So I could hit the toggle and then drag with the mouse and then release the toggle. Unfortunately, there was no way to toggle the left mouse button. I don't recall at what point I transitioned to using Dragon Naturally Speaking uh, dictation software to supplement me. Um, eventually, as my arm got worse, I've relied on Dragon exclusively. Dragon is wonderful for dictating text. As you can see, as I'm dictating this into a Microsoft Word document, period. It also has some limited mouse control features, period. Here I'm going to use mouse commands on Dragon to drag and drop a file. Wake up. Mouse 7. 8, 3. Click. Drag mouse right. Stop. Go to sleep. Back in 2012, I began experimenting with Arduino microcontrollers. And I focused on building infrared remotes so that I could more easily control my TV, cable box, and other devices. The culmination of this project was what I call my ultimate remote control. It not only allows me to control the TV, cable box, DVD player. It can also emulate a mouse and a keyboard on my PC through a small dongle that receives infrared signals. The ultimate remote can be controlled by any standard AT switches, but I use a device I call a sling ring. It's a 3D printed ring with three micro switches. I hold it in my right hand and push the buttons with my thumb. The left button moves the cursor left. The right button moves the cursor right, and the center button selects. Additional functions can be obtained by pushing two buttons at once. For example, if you push the right button and the center button, the cursor goes down. If you push the left button and the center button, the cursor goes up. Clicking on the items across the top row selects different screens. The C is for cable, the M is for mouse, the K is for keyboard, A is for my amplifier, TV, Blu-ray, extra commands, and a Bluetooth command, which we will explain later. This is the cable screen that allows me to control my cable box. Here is the keyboard screen. As you can see, we emulate a full keyboard, although it's a bit difficult to use. And finally, here is the mouse movement screen which also includes some limited keyboard functions, like arrow keys. Let's demonstrate mouse movement. Here we move the cursor to the upper left arrow and select, and it goes up, left. Now it's going up. Now we'll go up to the right. Now we'll go left. Now we'll go right. Down left, or rather straight down. Now, when we hit the L in the middle, that means left-click. 
And here we've called up my Facebook page. Now we're going to go down to the second row. The W is the wheel, the mouse wheel, that allows us to scroll. The ultimate remote allows us to do things that could not be done with Dragon or any other assistive technology program that I've found. Here I'm in Fusion 360 CAD program, and in order to rotate an object, you have to hold down the shift key and then drag by holding the middle mouse button. I can do this easily with the Ultimate Remote. One of the other features of the Ultimate Remote is the ability to do switch control on iOS devices like an iPhone or an iPad. If we come over here to the upper right corner of the screen, there's a small Bluetooth icon. If we click on that, it now switches to switch control mode and the push buttons in my hand on the sling ring now control my iPhone. Let's check out my Facebook page. Doing a long press on the select button emulates the home button. And then if I push two or more buttons together, it breaks out of switch control mode. And now we're back in infrared remote mode on my mouse control page. But wouldn't it be a lot easier if I could move the mouse quickly and naturally? Well, we have a way to do that now. The device that you see hanging around my neck and in front of my face is the joystick that I normally use to drive my wheelchair. I push the tip of the joystick with my lower lip like this. Right now I don't have the joystick connected to my wheelchair. It's connected to a device called a Freedom Wing, which was invented by Bill Binko of AT Makers. It allows you to connect any standard analog wheelchair joystick with a 9-pin connector on it into the Freedom Wing, which then also controls an Arduino microcontroller, and you can program it to do a variety of things. The Freedom Wing was originally designed to be used with a Microsoft Xbox adaptive controller for gaming purposes, but we've adapted it to other uses. For example, here's a shot of Bill and I flying my drone over my house and I'm controlling the drone using my wheelchair joystick. But on an everyday basis, I'm using the wheelchair joystick to control the mouse on my computer. Look how easy it is to drag and drop using my wheelchair mouse joystick. I have my sling ring connected to the Freedom Wing. This is a close-up view of my Freedom Wing connected to an Adafruit feather mounted in a 3D printed box and with an OLED display on top. The OLED display lets me see things like when I'm left-clicking, there's the L, or if I right-click, there's the R. And if I push two buttons together, I get a middle click for M. The third button allows me to select Shift, Control, Alt, and some other modes. There, if I click once on the third button, it blinks on the S, and if I select that, now I'm doing a shift. It holds down the, the shift key for shift click. Hit the third button again, and deselect that. Similarly, I can hold down Control or Alt. Also, when it's in setup mode, when I click the left button, it puts me into speed change mode. When I'm doing fine detail work, trying to click on small items, sometimes I need the speed much slower. If I'm playing a game and need to get from one side of the screen to the other in a hurry, I turn the speed up. When I get the speed where I want, I hit the mode change button again, and we're back to normal. One more mode I want to talk about, and that's what I call Discord mode. When I'm playing online games using Discord to communicate with my friends, I have to press the middle mouse button repeatedly as push to talk. 
and sometimes it's hard to push two buttons simultaneously. So I created a special mode called D for Discord mode. Now the setup button works as the middle mouse button, and I can use it for push to talk. If I want to get out of the Discord mode, I have to push two buttons together, and now we're back to normal. It just makes it easier to do that middle mouse click without having to push two buttons simultaneously. Let's illustrate how quickly I can move the mouse using the Freedom Wing mouse. This is one of my favorite games called Zuma's Revenge. Watch this. There's no way I could play a game that quickly by moving the mouse with the ultimate remote. Let's try another demonstration to show you the versatility of using the Freedom Wing mouse. Here we are again in the Fusion 360 uh, CAD program. By the way, the design that I've been displaying here is the design for the joystick mount that hangs around my neck. Anyway, Here's how I can move the mouse quickly using the Freedom Wing mouse. So even though the ultimate remote allowed me to do things like design this joystick mount that I couldn't have designed using a simply voice control under Dragon, the Freedom Wing makes everything much, much easier. I'm going to do an experiment here. I'm going to try to design a box in Fusion 360 all in one take without any editing. So let's see how quickly I can do this. Create a sketch, select the rectangle, wake up, press delta, press eight, press zero, press enter, press five, press zero, press enter. Press echo. Press three. Press zero. Press enter. Press foxtrot. Press 8. Press Enter. Press 5. Press Enter. Go to sleep. And there we go, in a matter of seconds, using the Freedom Wing and Dragon Naturally Speaking to dictate a few numbers, we've created a nice little box design. That probably would have taken me 15 or 20 minutes using the Ultimate Remote, and it would have been impossible without either of these devices. One of the disadvantages of using the Freedom Wing is that you have to disconnect your wheelchair joystick from the wheelchair and connect it to the Freedom Ring. 
you have to unscrew a couple of thumb screws and plug the DB9 connector into the other device. Now I'm fortunate that I have two joysticks, one that I use to drive my wheelchair and another one that I use to operate the Freedom Wing. And I just slide the joystick out of the little mount that hangs around my neck and swap it in over to the other one. At some point, we're probably going to develop some sort of a switch, whether it's a mechanical switch or an electronic one, that allows you to quickly switch between freedom wing and wheelchair driving. But that's down the road. There are some problems associated with a device like that. In conclusion, the Ultimate Remote and the Freedom Wing both allow me to do things that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. The Ultimate Remote is still useful. Obviously, I use it to control my iPhone, my TV, cable box, all of that. And sometimes you just want to pull up to your computer and start using the computer without having to switch over to the other device. So it's useful for that purpose as well. We have uh, complete instructions available on the Adafruit learning system on how to construct your own ultimate remote, all the uh, files, uh, parts lists, uh, construction videos, everything is available uh, at learn.adafruit.com and search for ultimate remote. The Freedom Wing is available uh, to AT makers for people that want to use it. We've not yet released the mouse control software or the drone control software for flying a drone, but we do have the ability to use it for an Xbox controller. And a lot of people have gotten a lot of good use out of it for that purpose. So if you have any questions, leave me a message on my YouTube channel, uh, my Facebook page, the AT Makers Facebook page, uh, or my blog. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for listening.